I'm Joel Salatin, Polyface Farm, editor of the Stockman Grass Farmer magazine, with a message to the ethical omnivore movement. You know, when anybody says, haven't we really gotten beyond eating animals? I always want to say, you know, everything is eating and being eaten, and if you don't believe it, go lie naked in your flower bed for three days and see what gets eaten. The truth is that the, the life death, decomposition, regeneration, life, death, decomposition, regeneration, that cycle is, is, is foundational to the ecology. I mean, nothing is, there, there is no more, whatever, uh, prey, predator situation going on more than like in a compost pile. Everybody says, well, a compost pile is really good. Um, and then people say, well, but we're talking about sentient beings. Well, let me tell you about sentient beings. You know, the fact that a, that, a, that an acacia tree emits pheromones to make its leaves bitter so that a giraffe won't eat them as well and those move up the, up the tree line to keep the giraffes from eating, I call that sentience. Uh, when, a, when a sugar maple tree, we tap sugar maple trees, when the wind begins to blow, the, the tree doesn't give sap anymore because it's holding back the sap in case the wind blows a branch off and there's a big break so it can rush the sap to the to the wound of it's like the blood of the tree right cleanser as soon as the wind stops the sap begins to flow i call that sentience and so the fact is that the entire cosmos the entire earth is pulsing and reverberating with sentience with understanding with 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 life responding to life and so to break out an animal um, and say, well, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't exercise our predation on an animal uh, because they're sentient beings. Uh, what makes them more sentient than than our own microbiome, than the language of the actinomycetes that are bargaining with the gibberellins and the and the glomalin in the soil, you know, that are that are making, I'll trade you, uh, you know, two borons for three of those polysaccharides, you know. I mean, that kind of commerce is going on in the soil. They're actually, I mean, Stanford University has already isolated their language to each other. They're talking. We know that our bacteria talks to each other. And so this, this sentience is, is all around us. And, and so the fact that we, we, as we could say, keystone species, that we can actually step into this magnificent choreography, not only as healers, but as participants in this, in this great ballet, is, is both an honor and a privilege. So that's why we want to exercise it well. And to and to bring the the the, the death or the, the sacrifice that's required, whether you bite into a carrot and kill it or bite into a T-bone um, steak, the fact is there cannot be any life without death, and we can inject ourselves into that that amazing play as as, as participants and use that great. Um, sacrifice we, we, we can determine what to sacrifice when to sacrifice and how to honor that sacrifice and so what brings sacredness to the sacrifice to, to the to the death that something else may live is the honor and respect given to it in life and um, and so that's why uh, the pigness of the pig and the chickenness of the chicken are so important because that creates the ethical moral framework of, of, of honor and respect to life that then elevates the sacrifice to sacredness in death that then is decomposed or digested and regenerated in new life and the circle goes on. So thank you for participating in this grand, great, uh, awesome circle of life and, and, and being uh, uh, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. uh, commonsensical enough and, and uh, appreciative, appreciative enough of that visceral, practical cycle to be a part of it.